Hey, what's up, everybody? So I just had a great podcast with Matt Brown. We actually fought each other, and he um, he beat me. <laughs> it didn't go my way. It was a, it was a fight we were both really looking forward to. It was on a huge platform, uh, UFC on Fox Five, and it was actually the first time in my entire career I ever had to go to the hospital. You know, I wasn't like seriously damaged or anything, but when you get knocked out, like an actual knockout, you have to go to the hospital. Uh, per the UFC's regulations to make sure you're okay. So, uh, you know, I, I see a lot of fighters that do podcasts that that have guests and they interview them and they talk about headlines and they talk about upcoming events. And, you know, I don't see a lot of fighters from the UFC uh, that I can recall at least talk about a lot of the basic questions that, that I've been asked so many times in my career by so many people that I've met in person, friends, family, you know, at events, at seminars, you know, just just in general, it seems like a lot of the questions aren't like the the journalistic questions of like, uh, you know, how you feeling for your fight, how's your training going, you know, what are you doing for your training as far as your workout. A lot of the stuff is very simple, like what it's like to be a fighter, uh, what it's like to be in the UFC, what it's like to walk out in front of that crowd, what to get a huge knockout, um, you know, to choke someone out, to get choked out, to get knocked out. So I figured like when I have these podcasts and things come to mind that we don't necessarily get into in the podcast, I figure I'll just start explaining some of these things to you guys that are kind of important and <laughs> leading off. It's not a great one, but I'm sure a lot of you want to know because I've been asked by closer friends uh, and family, not necessarily the the random fan or follower that comes up, but what it's like to be knocked out and, and what it's like to be knocked out in the UFC, especially on such a big stage in front of so many people and just what that entire experience is like. So, you know, it was a good fight. It was a good matchup with me and him. And we didn't know what to expect, but we knew we were going to definitely be going for it. Uh, we mixed it up everywhere. I mean, it was literally all over the place. A lot of the strikes that were landed didn't, especially in the second round, but definitely in the first two, didn't really get noticed. I mean, it was, it was before the, the no crowd and all that, so you couldn't hear the impact. And there was a lot of strikes that were getting through on both of us so you couldn't really see. And then he managed to get me to the ground, which was, it caught me kind of off guard. I thought we would kind of just strike it out to the end, but he, he did good by grabbing my leg. It was kind of a weird kind of takedown. I kind of fell to my back. He came in with like a choke. It was one of those things where it was skidding so tight, but I had two chokes. He had two chokes. So first he had the Darce choke. I got out of it, ended up on top, landed some ground and pound. He was trying to put me in a triangle. Uh, you know, I definitely wasn't going to let that happen in my mind. And I escaped a few attempts and then I happened to fall over to the side. And then he just happened to just bam, catch me so fast in a triangle. And between the Darce choke and the triangle, I'm not sure which one was the tightest, um, but one of them was really, really tight. And it took everything I had to get out. In fact, it was to the point where I was basically, uh, you know, I, I came to the conclusion I was gonna pass out or get out. Barely survived, got out, ended up on top. I think I landed some ground and pound just, uh, you know, instinctively. Yeah, I didn't have much power at that point. And then the round was over. So I got went back to my corner. And then usually, you know, we trained AK really hard. So usually after 30, or 30 45 seconds, you're ready to go again. It was like 10 seconds left. They start taking the chair. And I'm like, shit. Like I was worried because I was like, holy shit, my body is not ready to go back out there. We went out there and we were mixing it up again. And I remember he was backing me up to the cage. And Matt Brown has so much pressure. And when you're feeling kind of fatigued and tired and like you need a break to like kind of catch up and, and get your bearings, the worst thing in the world you can ever have is a pressure fighter. And he was just all over me, just pushing me back. I saw that I was going against the cage, so I wanted to circle out, which is the proper thing to do. And I knew as I circled out, he was going to strike. You know, I'd watched so much tape on him. I knew exactly kind of how he, how he fought. Um, and I actually put both of my hands up to block, and he still threw a left, which got between both of my hands somehow. Like somehow I just managed to go right between and nail me directly on the jaw. When he nailed me on the jaw, brilliant follow-up by, by Matt Brown. He landed the, the punch on the jaw, which pulled my head out this way, and then he landed a right. I mean, the right was completely clean because both my hands were over here. So that, that right hand on the left side of my jaw did it. I mean, I was like from standing to ground, like it was like I was out. Um, and then he came up and obviously followed up with the punch. 
<laughs> when you watch the video, you're like, oh man, really? You had to do that? But I've done that too. So I can't be mad. I can't be mad about that. You know, when you're in there, you're fighting to the death it's it, sometimes, and at least mentally. And so, you know, you don't want to stop fighting until the ref pulls you off and, you know, you're just throwing punches and going for it. So, um, yeah, so he landed that punch. Uh, they stopped the fight. And so this is kind of what I remember from that point on um, after I kind of came to to kind of describe to you guys what it was like. So number one, first of all, you don't, the, the one way or the one thing about uh, losing in a way of a knockout is you don't feel it. So, I mean, that's the plus, that's the plus side. You don't feel the, the pain, you don't feel it. You feel it later, but you don't feel it at the time. And then you're sitting at the octagon, you know, you're on the floor, you got all these guys come in and they're asking you a bunch of questions. I was fine. You know, I remember coming to, I was out for like a, maybe a couple seconds. It wasn't like I was sleeping or anything. So I do remember coming to and, and just, this is kind of the the scariest part. You know, it's not the pain, it's not the fatigue at this point it's the realization that you're sitting down in the octagon and you're not supposed to be sit <laughs> sitting down in the octagon with people around you that's that's the first thing that comes to your mind so it's cloudy but you really start understanding that you lost at this point and that is not a good feeling um and they start, you know, are you okay? What day is it? I, whatever questions they were asking, but it's like you don't even care about what they're asking because you're trying to ask questions like what happened, you know, you know, what, what I get hit with. Like you're just trying to find out every bit of information that you can, you know, because you have no idea. You don't know what happened. You just know that you're sitting on the octagon floor and you see, you know, your opponent, Matt Brown, in this case, you know, jumping around, being excited, his team, my team's trying to come in to come to me. And it's a scary, scary feeling because you realize that like all that hard work, all that effort, it, it's like a heartbreaking feeling to me. It's not like a pain or a scared kind of feeling. It's more of just like, oh man, you know, I, I let everyone down. And, and I think the biggest concern you have is like, how bad did I let everyone down? <laughs> was it like really embarrassing? You know, like, did I, was it like a highlight that's going to be played forever? And like, did I just like, you know, was I like spitting and, and my eyes rolling back and like, like, you know, you wonder like how bad of a knockout it was. And so you're thinking about all these things and, and then they're getting you up and then they, you have to stand there, which is weird. Cause you know, you just got knocked out. It's not a good feeling, but you got to be a man, go out there and, and, and stand next to your opponent, shake his hand, obviously. And, and good for him. I, there's no hard feelings toward uh, Matt Brown at all. Of course we've all been there. Yeah. You know, we've had our share of knockouts and, and, and we can definitely take one, you know? So hats off to him and and then they raise his hand and and then you see the replay and, and <laughs> when you see the replay that's like the first time you're like ah oh, god i wish it was less than that you know like i wish it was not as bad as that i don't think anyone's happy with the knockout uh when they see it for the first time um then you go backstage you walk backstage you're obviously let down you talk to your team your team's kind of comforting you as well um and you for me at, the, at this stage i don't know exactly for i can't speak for everybody but for me I didn't even get knocked out like that bad, I think, because like I was out for like a couple seconds. But even for a couple seconds, I was confused for like a long time. Like I was asking a lot of the same questions to the same people, and they were telling me that they had already answered what I was asking like multiple times. And this went on for like a while. So like that's not a good feeling either <laughs> because I'm like, I hope this ends. I don't want to like spend the rest of my life – asking the same questions you know and so that's kind of setting in the disappointment setting in in the case of me getting knocked out they had to send me to the hospital and i'm sitting there and i'm and i'm still at the hospital asking questions trying to find out what happened you know exactly how i looked before yeah, who who was winning up until the knockout these are the questions that, come, that comes in your mind you know like were you winning before the knockout came how did I look? Did I look bad? You know, you just get so like insecure and like curious about how everything went before the knockout. Um, and I was still asking questions that, that, you know, I'd already been asking and, and getting the answers to and just forgetting. So definitely some short term memory loss there. And then slowly that ends, you know, and it gets it gets better throughout from the from the hospital time until back to the hotel and until sleep time. It got better, you know, headache. Uh, you know, obviously you're, you're beat up your body from the, the lumps, from the elbows and the kicks and the knees and all the, the strikes that were landed, but mostly it's just your heart, you know, it's mostly just your, uh, 
you know, your feelings are hurt and, and you feel bad because you lost just like any other loss you had, whether it's a decision or a submission or, or a knockout. And then you got to just uh, move on. So, yeah, just for those of you wondering, when, when you see these big knockouts and, and, and you see, you know, they're, they're exciting. It's exciting to watch somebody get knocked out, but it's a tough thing to go through. And that's why when these guys pick themselves back up, come out there and fight harder, you know, it shows a lot about their character. And that's why I've always respected fighters that's been beat by submission, by, by getting choked out, by getting knocked out, and then they get up and they go out there and do it again. It just shows no fear. 